All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to welcome again, John Gillum, who is in the Toronto area. How are you doing, John? Yeah, doing well. And yourself? Good, good. And John founded Originality.ai after selling a content marketing agency he had founded, launched in November 2022 to be able to detect chat uh, or GPT-3 generated content uh, before even chat GTB had been launched. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today is content integrity. So um, where are we today right now, uh, John, would you say with with AI and content integrity? Because like people have just jumped onto AI, pumping out content, uh, then, you know, people are pumping out content using AI, then they're using other tools to pretend it's not AI and all of that. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So what's the state of play right now? Yeah, I think I think society as a whole is still going to be wrestling with this topic of where do we want uh, AI content and where do we not? And I think it's certainly seeping into places online that we don't want AI generated content. You know, I think it's pretty pretty easy to say that we don't want to read reviews uh, for for you know, health products that were AI generated. Um, yeah, but then there's plenty of use cases that are that are phenomenal for it. Um, so I think right now it's still in flux. Uh, I think detectors are performing a High, very accurate, but not perfect solution to to the problem of sussing out detection, but or mm -hmm. sussing out AI. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to be in flux for a little while still. So do you think, um, I mean, I don't think a lot of people really understand, do they? I mean, they still, a lot of people using AI, they still don't understand like really how it works, where it comes from, um, all of that. I don't even think people really understand the concept of, of plagiarism anymore, particularly if you're doing it through using an AI tool. Um, so how do you, uh, so um, how do, how do you get around this in terms of like what are some guidelines you would offer to people in or you know an a, a an ethical and proper use of AI? Yeah, so I think for companies, it's they need to make a decision on where they want to be using it and where they don't want to be using it. And so if if they want their content to be pushed out there, their email, their LinkedIn post, whatever it might be, and they're okay with it being AI generated, then that's fine. They should just you know, potentially disclose that if they want to. Um, but I think a lot of people are sort of head in the sand um, and just leaving it up to employees and team to do what they want. And I think they're the result of that is they're accepting a lot of risks that come with AI generated content that they're they're not in control of. And I think that's the the danger. So what should people do is decide whether or not it's should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed and in what circumstances and then put in place controls to make sure that those whatever sort of procedure and rules they set up get get followed. Yeah, because we always run the risk and at a time like this, like that it becomes a bit like Wild West, you were, um, and especially because there's so many tools available that it becomes very easy for an organization to kind of lose control over what people are using, um, you know, especially because tools are coming out, seems every 10 minutes, new tools are coming out. So. Like you said, um, companies need to make a conscious decision on on the use of a uh, on the use of AI and how they want AI used in their organizations. But I don't feel like this is happening a lot because I don't feel like there's a great understanding at the top of the organization about the ramifications of AI. Yeah, so I mean, we, we build mostly for like most of our users come from the world of web publishing. So people that have websites get lots mm -hmm. of visitors um, and then get traffic from from Google and make make money that way. Um, we've had a lot of customers that come to us after their site was massively impacted um, by a Google update and mm -hmm. say we didn't think our AI, we didn't think our writers were using AI. We were paying them full full pop um, where they just copy and pasting of the chat GPT and then their site got um, negatively impacted by Google. And so this sort of um, the, the risk that is seeping into companies um, at, at lower levels without an understanding is is significant. I mean, depending on the business that might not be like, you know, if it's a if it's a mom and pop or a small business that does like HVAC or a construction company, probably not, a bit, you know, probably not a massive risk of the marketing person mm -hmm. using AI, but in some businesses where that the business is the content, then then it's a huge risk. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, absolutely. And and I think, uh, again, like I said, I mean, I think a lot of this comes from 
uh, what we were talking about is that it's early days and people haven't really gotten their head around it. Um, but I think that the other point that you raised there, which is an important one, is that also people don't understand the the implications, right? And so you may be producing a lot of content every and this is fantastic but it's being picked up as ai it's damaging your it, it's uh, the google algorithms are dinging you all of this um so it's no it's not something that you can really leave to chance is it no no i think if if you rely on you know i think there's there's google is in a very tricky spot where they provide they need to sort of they're facing this existential threat where if their search results are filled with nothing but ai content then why would people go to Google? Why wouldn't they just go to the AI? Yeah. But then they also have to are kind of facing their Kodak moment where they have to be this AI forward company. Otherwise, they're going to get replaced. Um, and so they're trying to really walk this line between being AI forward while defending their search results from AI spam. And they're aggressively going after AI spam. And um, those that are using AI and trying to do it in an ethical way that can, can get wrapped up in those in those updates. Yeah, and and I think um, and exactly. I mean, and part of the I mean, part of the uh, the issue it's having, as you said, is a lot of people are outsourcing a lot of this work, right? You know, so in companies, I mean, you ran a content marketing agency before. I mean, there's a lot of outsourcing of this, and and then an assumption that whoever you're outsourcing it to is doing it the right way. I don't think those are assumptions you can make anymore. So I guess um, any any outsource, any outsourcing uh, you do, you need to be very, very careful about who you're outsourcing to and vetting them to make sure that, as you said, they're not just uh, using AI to shortcut. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people are happy to pay a writer or an agency, you know, $100,000 for that piece of content, mm -hmm. whatever the rate might be, not very happy to find out that it was copied and pasted out of ChatGPT in, right. in five seconds. Um, that's not, that's not, a, doesn't feel like a very fair transaction. And so, yeah, the the process that, and that's really what we are trying to drive with our tool tooling is that transparency between the writer, the editor, an agency and, and the client and sort of have everyone understand that, you know, this, this person deserves, this person created this to your standards, human content, um, and, and deserve to get fairly compensated. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, um, so the genesis of the product and the, and how the product operates. Yeah, sure. So, uh, we run in the content marketing agency. We're one of the heaviest users of the popular AI writing tool at the time. So this predated ChatGPT, but there's a tool called Jasper and we were one of the heaviest users of that platform within the content marketing agency with a product that we were selling as sort of transparent AI content, that this is AI content with a human in the loop and we're able to sell it for a much, much cheaper rate. Um, the, we, we sort of saw that we were struggling to put controls in place to make sure that our writers on our sort of human content were truly writing, writing, we got a policy, mm -hmm. they were signed off on it, but we didn't have any great controls. And so that's where we, we wanted to build um, sort of a modern, content quality QA, QC tool. So being able to get a piece of content and then check to make sure that it was, you know, if you're okay with AI, that's fine. Like it was AI or not plagiarism, uh, free fact check, the, the content uh, provide a fact checking aid, uh, readability score, uh, and uh, grammar and spelling check. And so to try and produce a complete QA, QC step for, for content and that was really missing in the space. We were, we deeply felt the problem within the content marketing agency. But anybody that buys content from somebody and wants to make sure that it meets certain standards has this problem. Yeah. So how does it uh, how does it operate? I mean, you mentioned like fact checking and stuff. How does it? It, it seems to have a lot of different dimensions uh, before you know as part of its quality check. Yeah. So we have um, so we have our own AI team that builds builds models that helps mm -hmm. us with the the AI detection and then also the fact checking as well. And so the fact checking aid is it's an interesting one where it's because what is what you know when it opens up questions of what is truth what's yeah, yeah. is that factually correct or not it's like well it's an opinion yeah and so anytime that there's a statement of fact um our model looks to pull out relevant information um from the internet and then it's an aid that provides basically the same steps that you might do if you were an editor to look at okay this is a fact that the statement of fact that has been made i now need to go to google and see what the consensus on like okay what does wikipedia say versus versus some other source and what is what is correct and so we basically try and produce uh identify those statements of fact and then provide all the research for a editor to efficiently make the decision on whether or not that statement is is factually correct or not mm -hmm.
Yeah, that, it's 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 fascinating because, as you said, I mean that's a whole area in it's in and of itself, and you know, facts versus opinions versus objective truths versus whatever else. Um, yeah, so that that is that is quite a challenge. And one thing you mentioned earlier to uh, earlier, I just wanted to come back to too, is is um, do you think going forward that we should be in that position where people should know, like if if something is produced majority of the contents produced by AI or whatever, that people should be aware of that, that it should be labeled in some way, at least you should have, I mean, or does that matter as long as it's, um, you know, if it's vetted properly? Yeah, I, I think, I think the author is going to matter. And so I think, I think whether, I think more, more moving forward, I think, how does this, how does this sort of get resolved? It's like, well, is your name on it? Is this is this a John Golden produced piece of content, mm -hmm. and that he's putting his name on it as the author? Um, and if that's if that's a one to one communication, maybe we don't care. So if it's an email that was AI generated, uh, mm -hmm. I use it a lot. I you know I would rather communicate in spreadsheet format than than word format, and so mm -hmm. um, I use it a lot for my own writing where I dump thoughts and then say make this sound less dumb, and it does a great job at that. Um, and and. But it's my own thoughts, and do I declare that in an email? And so usually no, because I my my name's behind it. Sure. But I think if if somebody is using it to produce content without a human in the loop, without a human putting their name on it, I think there should definitely be there should be attribution back to the author. And if that author is is um, the AI, then I think that that should be the case. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know how it's all going to play out, but I, I believe there should be there should be increased traceability back to the author and if that author is the ai then it should be back to the ai yeah no i i agree and i mean i think the same goes for you know as a you know for ai where it's ai agents or people interacting with their you know voice ai now where they're you know they'll be able to agents actually able to ai agents able to engage with you i still think regardless of how realistic that becomes i do think that people have the right to know whether they're interacting with a human being or whether they're interacting with an AI agent or as you said whether the content was truly written by you or whether it was written by um you know by an AI tool yeah agreed yeah agreed. yeah so where do you see this um so where do you see this going like what do you think um you uh, like you mentioned like the Google and all those there's a lot of challenges for them around this I mean where where do you where do you see this going um and do you see them continuing to try and focus on original content or do you see them having to having to kind of modify and and uh you know take into account the realities of where we are yeah I think I think Google um not not Google is being overwhelmed by AI spam and they need to fight that. Um, not all not all AI content is spam, but I mm -hmm. think in 2024 all spam is has been AI generated. Why would somebody spin up human writers when they could spin up free mm -hmm. basically free AI? So all, all spam in 24, 2024 is AI. And so Google needs to fight it and will need to continue to fight it. And I think those that are using it will continue to get um wrapped up in updates that that impact impact them i think a lot of platforms um reddit medium etc the, the, they're at risk of of the value that they bring to the world being being reduced because of spam ai spam being over, overrunning their platform um I think reddit less so because it has the sort of the moderator um mm -hmm. process in place um but i think yeah overall it's i think this this battle um so to speak, between sort of AI spamming and quality quality content is is going to be a massive challenge to Google and other um, publish user generated platforms that publish content, LinkedIn, et cetera, Facebook. Um, it, so it's going to be a constant. It's going to be a constant battle. Um, right now, I would say that I'm optimistic that the sort of the performance of LLMs has plateaued to some extent, and the mm -hmm. performance of detectors have sort of they will never be perfect, but they are highly accurate, sort of 99% accurate at detecting straight GPT-4 generated content, will incorrectly call human content AI content about two to 3% of the time. Right. So they're not perfect. And if you have a single piece of document, like a single text, you can't say kind of with certainty that was AI generated, but on a on a whole, they're, they're highly accurate. Um, and, and so I think this, I think it's gonna be continue to be a battle. I think for the near future, um, it, detectors are performing quite well 
you know, when GPT-10 comes out, will will it still be possible to detect it? I don't know. Probably won't age well, that comment. Yeah, well, I mean, and and I think the other part too is, and it's probably it's a big challenge that they're they're already trying to to uh, meet, but not successfully yet. Is as we learn, as we learn to um, you know to use AI, and as we learn, you know, how to write prompts and all of those kind of things, that that's how we're going to expect to be able to communicate with any any piece of software, whether it's a whether it's a search engine or whatever, we're going to like move away from our old like putting in a few keywords and we're going to want to put in a a nice prompt. We're probably going to want to speak it, um, not even write it in, speak it. So so there's there there is challenges going forward for you know how people are going to e- expect to interact with with software. So I think those those are big challenges too. Agreed. Agreed. And I think the relationship, like if, if someone is working with a marketing agency that is producing content for them, what is the expected level of transparency around like, you know, if you were, if you're hiring a marketing agency, what are the, what are the controls and policies that they have in place that, that relate to this? Because this now, this now impacts you more than it, more than it used to. Yeah. And that's going to put pressure on marketing agencies, isn't it? Because I mean, they're going to have to prove the value of, of working with them as opposed to because it's going to be the temptation is just to get a bunch of tools and figure it out yourself or hire, you know, one contractor or whatever it is like that. So I guess from content marketing agencies are going to have to really show their worth and maybe a way they haven't had to lately. For sure. I think it's it's already, it's, I'd say, especially at sort of like call it the bottom end of the market, um, already Mm -hmm. significant disruption in sort of like the content mill world where it's sort of pretty economical, uh, people looking for low cost content um those have, companies have been significantly disrupted by by the wave of ai yeah i was out to, I had a, a, a it was a kind of a sad a surreal a sad experience so in some ways like a couple of years ago i was at a conference in in las vegas and uh the the keynote at the start it was just when like you know chat gtv and all that was taking off and, and one of the keynotes at the beginning the guy you know showed oh, oh you can use it to write emails and produce content and all of that most a lot of the audience hadn't been exposed to this before after the keynote they told everybody you know go into the exhibit hall and everyone goes into the exhibit hall and there's about five different companies who were like you know, we'll write your blogs and all of that for you. <laughs> like, I, I was so sad because it was like their business evaporated like in a couple of seconds after everybody <laughs> suddenly realized they didn't need to use this anymore. So I think there's I think there's there's lots of, as you said, I think there's lots of challenges, um, particularly at uh, at maybe, you know, the, the lower end of the market. And where does your tool go from here? Yeah, I think we're, we serve copy editors, anybody that functions as a copy editor, anybody that receives text from themselves or others, and then needs to perform checks to make sure that that copy meets their standards. Um, so right now we have a detection, fact checking, plagiarism checking, readability, um, and grammar and spelling checking. There's other tasks that copy editors do. They need to make sure that it's going to perform well in Google. So we can we can add in some functionality around that, which we're really excited about. They need to make sure that it meets their editorial standards. And so a lot of companies will have editorial guidelines and then we'll need to manually go through this process of checking editorial guidelines against the submitted piece of content. And I think AI is a, is a phenomenal tool at, at helping helping do that as well. So basically any task that a copy editor do, does where we're aiming to um, support them in the, the execution of that of that step. Excellent. And um, and just um, any, any other developments you see in the in the in the not too distant future, particularly around content? Yeah, I think I think the glow will continue to come off. Um, sort of the 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 you know kind of what that that um, presenter was 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 sharing in terms mm-hmm. of the um, that I think human humanness will be valued, and that people will. I think that's that's going to. I think there will be this sort of as the hype cycle on AI crests. I'm not sure mm-hmm. when that's going to occur. I think the the sort of the the next phase of that will be um, sort of a a desire for the good old days of knowing that what you were reading was was human generated and i think that's going to uh spawn the next a, a next wave of something i don't know what that's going to look like yeah. but yeah i think that's the, the cresting of the ai hype wave will result in some nostalgia for being able to read and know that what you're seeing was human generated as opposed to ai generated yeah and let's face it i mean humans you know we our minds work in kind of strange ways at times so i mean i think yeah there will be a hankering back for maybe those uh 
content written that has insights that you weren't expecting or things that, you know, things that AI aren't right now isn't going to be able to reproduce, uh, you know, it was some of our quirkiness, put it that way. Yeah, agreed. No, it's, uh, I'm ex excited to, and I'm not all anti-AI. Like I think some of the most exciting mm -hmm. stuff will be that, that oh. the next, the next phase of, of, of what's coming with, with AI tools. Absolutely, absolutely. Once, uh, as I said, once we get over the shiny new toy, uh, the shiny new toy era. Well, listen, John, this has been great. All of John's information will be below this video. But before we go, John, please do tell people and remind them about you and your product. Yeah. So uh, if you're if you're publishing content on the web and want to make sure that you can hit publish with integrity and not uh, publish any content that could be damaging to your brand, and make sure your your whoever you're hiring as a writer isn't uh, isn't potentially cheating you by just copying and pasting it to ChatGPT. And that's what originality's uh, .ai is built for. Excellent. Well, like I said, go check it out, originality.ai. Thanks again, John. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.